Welcome back. You're watching Young Turks. Our next venture boasts of being India's first industrial hemp startup. Founded by seven college students from HR College Mumbai in 2013, Bombay Hemp Company, or Bohico, is on a mission to educate, cultivate and elevate the Indian market on the virtues of hemp. Currently working with scientists, farmers, policy makers, industry partners and the end consumer, Bohico is reimagining the future of Indian agriculture and sustainable living with hemp. I caught up with founders Sanvar Oberoi, Yash Kotak and Avnish Pandya. Take a look as they weed out the stigma around hemp and talk about its industrial wonders. 2010 is when we started planning it. Um, because uh, we're working with cannabis here and there's no precedence, there's no company before us. Uh, we didn't even know what we were thinking, whether it's even allowed uh, or it's legal or not. You know, those kind of questions came up back then. Um, so we spent three years in just understanding the different opportunities, the, the law in particular, the science, whether it exists or not in this country to uh, make use of it. Um, but we finally set up in, in 2013. And what we really do is, as a company, we're looking at cannabis overall as a, as, as a crop. Um, it's, it's tremendous industrial uses, which is fiber and seed can become textiles and seed and food products and healthcare products and, and the flower of the plant, which can create amazing medicines uh, from it. And um, overall, it's, it's, we have so much of it in this country, we can really benefit both our domestic markets, but also India can be a very major player in the world. Doubted to be a billion dollar industry in the West, you know, hemp in India has received very little recognition because it is often confused with marijuana. Break this myth for us. So yeah, I mean, as you rightly pointed out, you know, hemp comes with a lot of preconceived notions mm. because it comes from the family of cannabis. Uh, but what people don't really realize that it, it's it's absolutely antithesis of what cannabis is known for. Yeah. You know, uh, like not just from the physical uh, appearance uh, aren't different but even in terms of uses the crops are, are, are very different um, so hemp actually typically is known to be a 10 to 12 feet uh, long crop whereas the typical cannabis that gets one intoxicated is around 5 to 6 feet okay. high so physically the, there's a huge difference and in terms of uses also and also the key difference actually between hemp and uh, cannabis the one that gets one intoxicated is the THC element THC is the psychoactive substance the active component in the crop that gets one intoxicated and uh, if it's lower than 0.3 percent then it cannot get one intoxicated and that's oh. All right. Thank you for breaking that myth for us. Now, Avnish, you're the man who lies with the government officials at all levels. Uh, take us through some of the big challenges or the one big challenge that, you know, Bohiko faces. It wasn't really a big, big challenge to me uh, to, to convince the government on what kind of work we are doing. But what was difficult is to get to the right people in the government. Technically, lobbying is not something that we can do in our country. But what we understood is that this is a form of consensus building that we were bringing within the government. So the state officials who had a cultural understanding of cannabis and its industrial uses when complemented with the understanding of the central bureaucrats who had seen this happen in other economies like China, the US, Canada, where it's already a regulated yeah. commodity. Correct. So the globe got us the validation and slowly we brought it to a point where even the politicians started getting interested. Hence in 2016, uh, the November of 2016, just a year ago, uh, the state government of Uttarakhand, back then when Mr. Harish Rawat was still the uh, chief minister of the state, he got actually a hemp bandi as well as a hemp kurta from our company. And he could not believe that the local hemp in Uttarakhand could actually make that amazing piece yeah, of cloth. Yeah. And when we put it on him, he realized that this is the big opportunity. Yeah. He drove his state's bureaucracy and he created a regulation around the cultivation of hemp for Uttarakhand farmers. Hmm. Today, that regulation has come out in the form of a government order. Yeah. But of course, to start off a new industry, which is so regulated, it will take its time. So currently, things are in the R&D phase. But... The regulation is opening up, which is the most important thing. News, yeah. All right, Sanwal, you know now Bohiko works on both ends uh, in demand as well as creating supply. So while you work with the government on policy and you know training farmers, uh, on the other side you also work with uh, divisions such as you know textiles, food and nutrition, pharmaceuticals, and other advanced materials. How are you creating this immense economic, uh, environmental and social value from India that is so abundant in cannabis? It's a very established industry globally. Um, 
in this case particularly even if you just look across the border to china they literally the superpower in the world of cannabis today it's it's amazing they don't make much noise about it most of the noise is coming from the west part of the world but china is doing some tremendous work with it they've 3 million farmers who grow hemp there okay. they've literally brought a tremendous prosperity with that crop so um honestly in a way to to represent it it's just that we're really looking at what the best in class work is going on across the world and replicating and indianized versions of those uh, to our natural advantages yeah and plus a complementary of way of looking at it would be that the world is going to need more resources yeah. going yeah. ahead whether it is to build more houses make exactly. new clothes and we are reassessing our strategy and on whether the existing exactly. resources yeah. are good enough so we have a scalable source uh, which has some misconceptions so once we get rid of those we really have an opportunity to help multiple stakeholders all right yeah shino take me through uh, the products that bohico has on offer and also take us through the price points so the brand proposition of bohico is roti kapda makan aur dawa food clothing shelter medicine okay. the basic necessities of life and uh, so hemp has over 25000 uses but we touched upon this as sanwar rightly mentioned that there is an ecosystem for these industries mm-hmm. in india uh, so in so we have a range of uh, of hemp clothing all the top that we are wearing right now are all made of hemp uh we have a range of uh you know accessories that are hand woven in uttarakhand we have over 150 women artisans who actually make this uh, on a on a proper charkha um that's the textile end of things we also have a range of fabrics both handloom and powerloom uh, hmm. that are processed with hemp and blended with other natural fibers as well uh we have a range of uh, so mo- some of our products are already in the market some of our products are in the regulatory phase hmm. and some of the products are in the research phase and how are you selling those products so these products are available where uh, so these products are uh, predominantly available online hmm. uh, we are soon going to launch our own e-commerce portal where all of these products will be available widely plus we're tying up with a lot of like minded websites who have a similar vision like, uh, like ripple effect dot in hand tribe dot in jaipur mod uh, jaipur jaipur modern uh, there are a lot of these uh, you know off beat kind mm-hmm. of distribution platforms that we are really targeting where our target audience is also there uh, our products typically start at around our accessories start at around 1500 and go up to 2500 our clothing okay. starts at 2500 hmm. uh, and goes up to around 3500 rupees um we're also working with a range of food products that's currently under regulation hmm. with the fssa i just to certify that it's safe and it's you know edible yeah. Uh, of sort now amnesian you know, bohico has received the first license uh, to develop hemp seeds in india in partnership with the government entity take us through the scale of operations how many farmers are you working with how much hemp do you collect in a month on a monthly or on a yearly basis so the the license as you correctly mentioned is issued uh, in conjunction with the council for scientific and industrial research which is a government's uh, uh, premier scientific uh, research institution hmm. and the objective is to actually currently go out and collect uh, different cannabis accessions because there are more than 18 states in india that actually have notable cannabis cultivation to the first job that the government has entrusted us with is to actually test all the genetics that are present yeah. to understand what is it in our cannabis that makes our cannabis so different uh when we're talking about its narcotic uh, application it is what percentage of thc does it have what are the other phytochemicals present in it to do a proper scientific analysis of that so currently we work, we work with indigenous farmers to collect these varieties okay uh, and at the same time we also collect the fiber of the hemp which is then further used in prototyping of yeah. different products yeah. and creating of that as of now there is no cultivation industrial scale cultivation of hemp in india because we're still working around a genetics program which would give us the right seeds okay. once we have the right seeds is then we can go out and give it to a lot of different farmers in different areas mm. and that could become an industry then currently bohico is working with the institute in jammu and kashmir which has already issued a license and the state governments of uttarakhand and uttar pradesh are both in the process of developing a framework to issue research licenses for the same what is the revenue model and is bohico profitable today yes bohico is profitable today uh, our revenue model is predominantly our products our textile mm. range of products that are already in the market uh, we've uh, uh, crossed a revenue of over 50 lakhs uh, now and we just started uh, rolling in some serious money at the start of this year um but we've had some active businesses going on since over 2 years now 
uh, but our range of clothing was something that we just launched in the market at the start of this year. Now the government has issued the first ever license to grow and study the medicinal properties of cannabis. How will this license help transform uh, the medical landscape in India? Today now, because the license is issued, we can offer these cannabinoids, these chemical entities to so many different research institutions, ranging from psychiatry, neurology, uh, oncology, even areas such as uh, uh, epilepsy, which are major concerns in uh, in the whole neurology department. So, ranging all these conditions, these phytocannabinoids already having uh, preclinical and clinical evidence is opening up a whole new domain. By when will we see Bohico develop uh, a cannabis-based medicine? Of course, it's a long journey. Yeah. It has multiple steps. Currently, we are in the stage where we are isolating different uh, phytochemicals from the locally available plants. And uh, we should be in the preclinical phase in the coming couple of years. So, Yash, you know, take me through the marketing strategy. How do you plan to, uh, you know, popularize hemp and Bohico both? We go to a lot of uh, fashion schools and fashion colleges and give them fabric to play around with because they are the future of that industry so that they can get first hands on experience using hemp fabrics. Uh, so the strategy is is pretty much out there. We we talk a lot. Uh, we go to different networking platforms, speaking engagements. Uh, this interview, for example, the idea is to make sure that a lot of people know about hemp and its varied uses, and they make sure that they differentiate between the two crops. We uh, had a member of parliament, Mr. Tathagat Satpati, wear a hemp kurta on the floor of the parliament and speaking about. Uh, you know, wearing the hemp kurta. Uh, so things like that help. So we also give our hemp food products to different chefs mm. uh, to put it in their burgers, pastas, yeah. pizzas, experiment with it, okay. play with it and make sure that people, because to be honest, like five, six years back, right? If you told someone that, hey, this is a cannabis t-shirt, the first thing that comes to their mind was a Bob Marley t-shirt, maybe yeah. Yeah. something like that. And we want to change that image. We want to add class to what you know, the perception of hemp is in people's mind. What are the future plans? And I'm talking about just the next two, three years. The next sort of two years is when we're really going to be getting in um, a sort of each sector specific investment and sector specific partners. Okay. Uh, so far it was sort of all together in under one roof, which is, which is how we're still going to continue in a framework. But we're going to allow each of these opportunities to go out there in the world and exist by themselves as standalone mm. uh, companies. The way we've built our co-foundership is the same way we want to build this company as well in win-win scenarios. We wish you the very best, Team Bohico. With that, it's a wrap on this edition of Young Turks. Tell us what you thought of the show. Write to us at youngturks at nw18.com or ping us on Facebook. And do not forget to follow the news and highlights of the show on Twitter. Till next time, goodbye and many thanks for watching. <laughs>